Okay, up to 9.5. We are now solving cubic equations away from graphing into solving. Solving in algebra means that we can find a value for x that when we sub that in makes a true statement. Okay, so maybe you think that if I plug in 3, that will make a true statement. So if I plug in 3, I get 30. Plug in 3, I get 27 times 15. Uh, sorry, 9 times 15 and then 27 times negative 5. And uh, you know, it's not going to work out. But there are some values for x that do work when I plug them in. And you can find some of them often by guessing. Like, you could try plugging in 1. If I plug in 1, that's 10. Then that's 15. And 15 minus 5 is 10. So we happen to know that a solution is that x equals 1. Another one that's obvious is 0. If I plug in 0, that's 0 equals 0 minus 0. So there are two solutions. Turns out the rule is we're going to get one solution, in theory, possibly, as many as three different numbers. But I can't have four unique solutions or five. I can only have as many as three. What we do is similar to with quadratic. We shove everything over, try to get the lead coefficient for my highest degree term positive, and then see if I can factor it. So if I move this over, I get zero equals, and I'm going to put this in standard polynomial form, minus 5x to the third, and then plus 15x squared, and then minus 10x then I, it's just easier if I work with positive. So if I multiply everything by a negative number, I'll still get zero. There's no such thing as negative zero. Then 5x to the third plus 15x minus 10. I just think it's a good habit to do that. Now you look and you say, can I take a common thing out of everywhere? And you can take a 5 out of all of these three numbers, and I can take an x out. So I'm going to factor out an x, a 5x. What's left behind is x squared plus 3x, then minus 2. Just be careful that you do the factoring accurately, and you can double check by multiplying in, and you'll get exactly what you have up above. Well, this is a quadratic, and you can either go to a quadratic formula or your quad form in your calculator. I think most of the book ones will be easy enough to factor on your own. x squared gives you x and x. A negative 2 is going to be a 1 and a 2. If um, Oh, that should be plus. When I change all of these, that should be plus, sorry. And when I change this, that should be minus. So I'm not sure what I was thinking, but yeah, I've taken and multiplied everything by a negative, so the signs switch, so I apologize. When I go to factor, if the sign is a positive here, both of these signs will be the same, and they'll be whatever that sign is, so it's a minus and a minus. That 5x does not disappear, nor does the 0. And now you ask yourself, when is 5x going to be equal to 0? Well, that's when x equals 0. When is this equal to 0? Well, that was our other solution that we guessed. And here the final one is 2. So you've got your three solutions for your cubic equation. That's basically what you're doing. There are different things you need to look out for. Um, you need to look out for taking out a common number and then just that quadratic that you can factor. But that's essentially what you're doing, so it's pretty straightforward.